welcome to Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and this is the 21C, Bottle Float. It joined Lesney's Matchbox range in 1961 and was replaced in 1968 by the Foden Concrete Truck. My example has some roughed up paint on the body and unclean plastics. The front axle has also been crushed and has bent significantly. The decals are actually in fairly good shape all things considered, but I'll need to get some replicas for these. The base latches to the body using tongues cast in. I'm not really sure why this was called the bottle float instead of the milk float like Lesney's previous 7A and 29A milk float efforts. The model is most commonly found in this pale green shade, though rare versions can be found in light blue. It had clear windows on early versions that were later tinted green. The Comma FC van is the basis of this model, with the first generation produced from 1960 to 1967. The base is easily removed with a flathead screwdriver. Later versions of the model had two small rivets replace the front tongue, and so the white plastic bottles can be removed. They are looking a bit grubby. Next I drag out the windscreen that is firmly stuck in place inside the casting. That will need a polish to remove some of the light marks on the surface. There is a bit of a casting error on these comma floats as the door handles are found towards the front of the vehicle as was the case on vans with sliding doors but it wouldn't be possible to have sliding doors on this body style I don't think. Here's the components including the bent axle. The model came with all three colour varieties of wheel, black, grey and silver. There were two different sets of decals that could be found. Earlier versions had a bottle decal on the doors. The Drink More Milk roof banner featured a red background on the word milk. The later ones had the bottle logo switched out to a grazing cow decal and the roof banner moved the red background onto the drink more section instead of the word milk. Here I'm straightening up that bent axle so I can reuse it. Next I pour some hot water over the body and base to strip the paint with the help of caustic soda. The Comma FC series vans on which the model is based was produced from 1960 to 1976. The FC first series ran a 1500cc straight 4 engine in a Ford controlled body style, allowing for numerous conversions to be made. In 1967 it was renamed to the PB following interior and engine upgrades which coincided with Chrysler's merger with the Roots Group, owners of Comma. In 1974 the space van based on the same platform was launched and sold under the Comma, Dodge and Fargo names. Chrysler dropped the Comma and Fargo names in 1976. The final space van was built in 1983. The vans were popular with the British General Post Office and so were a common sight on UK roads. Aside from the post office, the van was unpopular with fleet operators due to its Ford control design. Instead, operators opted for more conventional Bedford and Ford vehicles. The main issue cited the restricted engine access, requiring the engine to be removed through the passenger door along with the suspension subframe. To remove the engine also required the front windscreen to be removed. So now I've polished up the metalwork and had it primed and I've polished up the window piece and dunked it in floor polish. This will revive it a bit and make it pop like new. I apply Tamiya TS60 Pearl Green to the body. It's a touch darker than the original pale green and has that metallic pearl finish. But I was very impressed with the finish when I last used it on the 57A Wolseley 1500, so I've gone with it again on this casting. Obviously, where I've attached my grip, I will go over it again later on. Coming to the end now as I polish up the axles, and hammer the wheels onto them. A dash of Molotow Chrome finishes the axles off. On these models, the front bumper, grille and headlights were trimmed in silver, so I will stick to the original blueprint. 
The small rear bumper never received any silver trim during production. Now I will begin reassembly here, but this does not mean the restoration is over. I opted to apply my reproduction transfers after assembly to save scratching and damaging them, trying to force the slots back into their corresponding holes. The window fits snugly inside and is supported by the milk float bed. Once I'm satisfied, I reattach the base. I slot in the rear tab first and push firmly down on the front until it eventually clicks. And there you have it. I place the banner transfer on first in order to avoid touching either of the side decals while applying. The banner is a bit fiddly owing to the curved roof. I squeeze out the excess water with a cotton bud. And then move on to the cow application, if I can catch said cow. These transfers are very high quality, although the cattle are both facing the same direction, where on the original they were both facing forwards. To finish, I apply Mr. Mark Softer Transfer Setting Solution. And again, I roll off any excess. So here is the what looks to be a stanced comma bottle float that we started off with. The bent axle is giving it that aggressive look you wouldn't normally associate with a milk delivery vehicle, while the plastics were dirty and paintwork play worn. So this milk float was looking sour, but you know what they say, that the cream always rises to the top. Fixed is that front axle so it sits more sedately. I've given it a couple of coats of pearl green to set it apart. The replacement transfers were a good quality, so I'm pleased with them. The plastics have been washed and the windscreen polished so they are looking a lot fresher. The axle ends and front end detailing have been finished with Molotow Chrome, so all the features really stand out. Anyway, that is all for now. Check out my Patreon and Instagram for all the latest from me. And as usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.